and welcome to another adventure. Um, we are in, uh, today we are in Caldwell, New Jersey, and we're going to explore a very uh, unique part of U.S. history. So the house behind me is the birthplace of the only president that is, was born in the state of New Jersey. Grover Cleveland was born here in, in this house. And we're going to take a tour of the house and I'll give you some good facts about him living here and then we'll go visit his grave and see his final resting place. Come along and join me on this unique part of American history. Grover Cleveland, the 22nd and the 24th president of the U.S. right here in Jersey. All right, here's a front look at the house that President Cleveland was born in. Two stories, very, very small. So this house uh, right by the busy uh, road here. So this house is actually owned by a uh, parsonage. So Grover Cleveland's father was a um, minister. Right next door is the church. St. Aloysius, that is the church she missed it at. So this, this, this was the parsonage to the nearby church, which is right over there. And he was born here. All right, so Grover Cleveland was born here in 1837. Um, and he was, and he died on June 24th, 1908, at the age of 71. Um, now, he, he was, this, I mentioned he was the 22nd and the 24th president. So his first term ran from 1885 to 1889. And his second term, the 24th president, ran from 1893 to 1897. So those were his uh, two terms, those were his two terms of the president. Now he actually, now the term he didn't, now Benjamin Harrison, of course, was president in between uh, those two. And Grover Clinton actually won the popular vote. Uh, in the election of uh, 1888, but he lost the electoral college vote. So sounds familiar, doesn't it? Sounds familiar. So nothing, nothing much changes um, uh, throughout history. So, all right, let me tell you a little bit more about Grover Cleveland, one of uh, probably one of our better presidents. He goes, he's, he's, going, he's going out of history as, as one of our, the other better presidents. Uh, but let me tell you um, some more facts. Alright, so President Clinton was born here. So when he became president, his, his um, first lady, he married Francis, Francis Folsom Cleveland. Um, and they were married in 1886. Um, now he was a bachelor when he entered the presidency, so he was um, only the second U.S. president that was a bachelor. Of course, the other one was James Buchanan, who never married. Um, this was Grover Cleveland, he was a bachelor when he won his first term and he married Frances Folsom in 1886 and they got married in the White House. So he's the only president to get married inside uh, the White House. Um, they, had, uh, they had a big party, um, which... Um, now I mentioned, I mentioned this because uh, Grover Cleveland was... 49 when uh, when he took office Francis his wife was 21 so that makes her the youngest first lady in uh, presidential history she was 21 years old when she assumed the first lady office when she married uh, President Cleveland got married in the White House and she um, they and they had six kids together the youngest is Ruth Cleveland, and we'll talk about her in a, in a, in a little bit once we get to the cemetery. Um, but she is um, she is well known for certain reasons. So Francis uh, Francis Folsom Cleveland. Now, what well, turns out that President Cleveland was actually executor of Francis Folsom's father's estate. He had passed. And Cleveland was actually the executor of his estate. All right, just took a tour of the house. Um, wasn't allowed to videotape it, but I did take some pictures of some things, so I'll leave those at the end. 
Um, fascinating history. This is actually, uh, my guy was telling me this is actually only one of 19 um, presidential places that actually are, have been preserved that uh, where president was born. So, um, the second, she was telling me the second floor was not there when the Clintons uh, lived here. And as I mentioned, the Clintons did not own this. This was the parsonage for the Presbyterian Church. Um, Grover Cleveland's father was the parson there. Um, so uh, they lived here when he, when he worked for the church. And of course, when he left the job, they had to leave the house. So, uh, and th now this is owned by the state of New Jersey and it's preserved as a National Historic Site. And let's see the, uh, the spire down there. That is the site of the church, the Presbyterian Church, that Grover Cleveland's father worked at. So you're there, and then it's pan over to the house. So that's so that's where they would walk to work. So, and of course, at the time, like the X, the stuff wasn't here. It's it's pretty rural. The Exxon and the uh, um, wasn't that suburban uh, now. Um, well, it wasn't as spurred back then as it is now, but yeah, Grover Cleveland. His real name is Stephen Grover Cleveland, and he he only he only lived there till he was uh, three and a half, um, and then he never came back here. Um, so, a little bit about the history of this house. Um, there is one story that I want to share with you. There's a uh, of a time of his time was here. So he was, uh, of course, he was a toddler here. And they had, um, it was like a, uh, I don't know, like a, um, a buggy that will come deliver ice cream like it was. And so he heard the bell and he was running out um, as a toddler. And um, someone said there was a, car, there was a uh, buggy coming. And one of the, there was a one room schoolhouse next door. And one of the, te the teacher who was teaching there ran and um, grabbed him and saved him from the uh, uh, from death from uh, getting hit and um, she actually lived to uh, the my tour guy was telling me she actually lived to about 90 years old so she actually got to see Cleveland um, both uh, both of his presidency which w w w was pretty cool so she so she uh, taught told stories about that until she died so uh That'll wrap it up from the house. We'll, we'll go down to Princeton, where Grover Cleveland is buried, and it's also the house that he retired to um, after he left public office. So I'll show you that. Um, let's show you the house. The house, the house itself is privately owned, but we can drive by and tell you a little bit about that. And I'll take you to uh, Princeton Cemetery, where President Cleveland is buried. And it's also a very famous vice president that's buried, uh, that's buried there. If you know, leave, leave it in the comments. Um, and uh, I'll take you along. All right, so when President Cleveland retired from public office, this is where he came to live out the rest of his life um, in Princeton, New Jersey here. Um, he lived here for what, I think, nine years later he passed after leaving the presidency, and then his wife, um, obviously, she was a good deal younger than uh, than he was. She lived here for for considerably longer um, after. So um, this is where he died, and then he's buried in the cemetery. And let's go check out the cemetery and see where he's buried. But uh, yeah, so this is this is the this is where, this is the home where President Cleveland lived out the rest of his life. Alright, so I made it to Princeton Cemetery. Um, uh, Grover Cleveland is buried here, uh, along with his wife and his daughter Ruth. So they were actually out of maps at the entrance. I'm going to try and find this um, just w via Google. And there's some other famous people here buried here, including the very famous vice president. Vice president. Um, did you guess who it is yet? I'll tell you at the end of the video. We'll show you if I can find 
his grave. All right, let's go find President Cleveland's grave. All right, I think I see President Cleveland's grave over here. It's this big one here with, with the American flags, I believe. Sun's in the bad place. Yeah, here we go, Grover Cleveland. Born in Carwell, New Jersey, March 18th, 1835. 1837, died Princeton, New Jersey, June 24th, 1908. And here is his, his wife, Frances. Frances Folsom Cleveland Preston. Of course, when President Cleveland died, she remarried. And Oscar Folsom, which is her dad, was one of Cleveland's uh, law partners in his law firm. So he actually knew Frances since uh, since um, since uh, she was young, and then um, Frances died October twenty ninth of nineteen forty seven, and nineteen nineteen forty seven is the year my dad was born. So that was what seventy five years ago for uh, for the first lady. And then over here, we have Ruth Cleveland, who is President Cleveland's daughter. Of course, she died in 1904, and she is the only one of the Cleveland's children that did not reach a daughterhood. And there are stories that Ruth Cleveland is where baby Ruth came from. Now, that is a... Because uh, back in the election of 1888, they were... Uh, they were running uh, ads for Baby Ruth and Baby McGee, who was the grand the the uh, granddaughter of Benjamin Harrison, who was um, running. And uh, it was quite and uh, so Baby Ruth became quite the uh, the popular star. And. Um, yeah, so she died when she was uh, 12. She was born in eight, born 1891 and died in 1904. All right. Grave of Grover Cleveland, the 22nd and the 24th President of the United States. All right, I found the grave I'm looking for. If you guessed Aaron Burr as the Vice President, you are correct. He is buried here in Princeton Cemetery along with President Cleveland. Let me show you his tombstone. Oh yeah, Aaron Burr. Him of the famous Hamilton duel. Died September 14th, 1836. This tombstone was a little more well-worn because he wasn't present. They don't uh, keep... Uh, Keep us in better shape, but yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool history. There's also a lot of uh, you know presidents of Princeton University. They're all uh, you know they're all they're all buried here. This is called called Presidents Row. So these are all presidents of Princeton at one, at one time. Oh, Aaron Burr's. Uh, grave is right by right in right by President's Row. So you want to find these, and then the white stone here. That's the cat. It's uh, and then President Cleveland's grave. You can see it, the little uh, right by the tree, right over there. That's that's President Cleveland's grave. Uh, but you just walk across, maybe. Uh, 100 yards or so, and get to to Aaron Burr's uh, grave. Anyway, pretty cool stuff. Uh, that's going to wrap up this video. I'm I'm, I'm going to head down to downtown Princeton, just walk around a little bit. I have I, I've never been there, so just walk around, grab some dinner, and head back home. So I hope you enjoy this adventure on the 22nd and 24th present of the United States. Um, we'll see you next adventure. I, I, I hope you guys have a great day.